Hello again, and welcome to the next in our series of workshops. This is a how-to workshop on creating simple videos. And I'm very pleased to introduce uh, our host of this workshop, Samuel Herzog, who is from CERN's audiovisual media team. So with no further ado, straight over to Samuel. Great, thanks, Andrew. Hello, everyone. Pleasure to have you all here. Uh, I will take you through all the basics of how to put together basic video using the DaVinci Resolve software. Uh, I am indeed from CERN's audiovisual department and um, so thank you all for inviting me to do this. I've never given a lesson to so many people at once before but this will be a fun challenge and uh, I think we can dive right into it. So I'll share the screen and get going. Okay, I hope you can all see. So here we are on the immediate opening of DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to operate on the basis that uh, most of you have probably never worked within the software or have never worked in video. So to start up very simply, obviously at the bottom, simply open a new project and give it a title. So we'll just give this uh, just a test project for now and create. I usually do recommend working on two screens if you have them, but if not, this works perfectly fine in one as well. Okay, so first I'll give just an overview of the space we're in. And the first thing to draw your attention to is at the bottom of the screen. I hope you can all see the screen clearly, by the way. Uh, but at the bottom of the screen, you'll find different sections. So the first media, the second cut, edit, Fusion, color, Fairlight, and Deliver. So most of these we will not enter. We won't need them. They're for special effects, they're for audio effects, and, or they're for live broadcasting. We are only going to use three of these. So the first, I would invite you to go into the edit section. This is where most of the work will take place. And we can really operate almost everything we want to do within this space here. So once we are here, you will find what's called the timeline at the bottom, fairly straightforward. You'll have your video and your audio tracks here. Over on the top left, you have your media pool. So as you can see here, this is where you will import your clips. So all the media will go in here, for whether it's audio, animations, video of any kind, we'll throw it in here. I'll show you how in just a minute. Uh, the effects library, so these are uh, just sections that can be activated or deactivated very simply. For now, we won't go into them other than perhaps just the text later on. I'll show you how extremely simple. And over on the right, top right, we have just the general, um, what's called the inspector. So this will give us just the facts about our clips, which I'll show you once we have something imported. The first thing we want to do, we want to go into File and Project Settings. This will open up this window here. The master settings are all we are going to need to look at. Very simply, so you will see the first thing is your resolution that we want to work in. So if you want to deliver a full HD, which would be a standard uh, video size for today or for anything online, you select it here, but you can choose any size all the way up to 8K or 4K or beneath that, however it fits. You can either end, even enter custom sizes if you want to make a square video or a vertical video or anything different, you can make, make it here. Uh, as we are, as I am from CERN, we're in Europe, we are working in 25 frames per second. That is the standard for European video. So we'll change everything to match full HD and 25 frames per second. That's all I'm going to change and save that. And from now on, we are ready to go and make, the and make our first video. So over here in the master section, we can create what's called a bin. This is essentially a folder, uh, but which will only be created within the, the actual software. It's not going to create it in your Finder or your Explorer. So ideally create a bin and call it, for example, footage. And you can make as many of these as you like. This is simply to enable you to classify what you're doing with the files you're importing. So it could also be music or animations or 
any 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 subfolders you want to create, you can do as well. So obviously we can either go to file and import and select the media, or you can even more simply uh, go to find your media and drag it in to the bin and drop it. And there we go. Okay, so you have your clips here. You can either arrange them by name, size, duration, as you wish. And once you double click on a on one of your clips, you will find this window will show you the, the footage. So this is the tunnel at CERN. And this is just a preview window. This is not what you're editing. So here you can go in and have a look at your clip. And if you say, I don't want that one, you can go into the next one, double click, and have a look at the one you're, you want to use. If you only want to use a section of it, there's a simple shortcut. You find the bit you want, you push I, and this will put your in point. Go to the further along section, push O for out. And then you've only selected this selection of the clip. If you simply drag it in like this, you will be taking video and audio. And as you will see, it appears on the right. And this is the actual window that we are editing. If you select only this, one here, you will take only the video, and obviously the other one is only the audio. You can change to view the audio track, if that's helpful to you as well. There's not much going on here, but you can see the audio peaks, but otherwise just your source material. So here we have our clips in our timeline. As you can see, there's a video section and an audio section. You can have as many tracks as you like, and you can overlay them simply. And obviously it becomes very simple from there. One little thing I will show you to simplify your life a little bit is right up here in the top left in the DaVinci Resolve section, you can go to keyboard customization. This is very useful if you want to arrange every, every single shortcut that uh, you might want to use. The simple ones I was going to show you immediately are on one and two, I have put zoom in and zoom out. On number one, you can see zoom in. Number two, zoom out. I recommend doing that so you can simply search for zoom or you can type on number one and affect what they do. And that means that I can zoom in on my timeline by pushing number one. So if I want to be more precise with my cuts, simply push number one. And I can drag my clip to exactly where I want it to end. To cut it, you can either use the blade or let's see, blade and apply cut. Or there is a shortcut which I've forgotten the name of, <laughs> which enables you to um, very directly, which I have on S, let's see, split clip, there we go. If you find split clip, so it's S for me, it will simply cut the clip I have selected. So all in all, so far, very simple. So this is how we simply use our, uh, the basic editing tool is here. You have access to your media, access to your previews, and the simple cuts. Now, if you'd like to do some small modifications, you can go up into the inspector. So the inspector, let's see, I have the zoom in way. In our inspector is just the basic modifications we can make to a clip. So if you wish to zoom in, for instance, simply click on it and drag it left or right. Zoom in or out. Same for the position, so I can zoom in, decide I want it this way, and I can even rotate it if I find it's not quite straight. All very simple, you can undo everything you do simply on the right. Apply or not the transformation, and that's it. And uh, same for cropping, you double click on the word. And if I decide I want to crop one side, this enables perhaps some more uh, creative editing. So you can decide that I only uh, want to have one side showing. So I can crop one half. Let's see. The other one I can crop the other, and, we, and you can mix up different clips.
these are two similar clips, so it doesn't really have to show. But anyway, you see the general idea, very simple. This is just how you can play around with your clip and be creative with it um, in a very quick fashion. There is a Fusion tab at the bottom. This is a special effects tab. I'm not going to go into that today, but if any of you are interested in that kind of thing and really doing further effects, you may have heard of After Effects. This is the equivalent of that in this software. Uh, I would recommend finding tutorials on that. It's quite simple to use, uh, but that's if you are interested in creating you know, crazy transitions or effects, that's the place to do it. A uh, couple more details on what we can do to our clip. Firstly, we can uncouple audio from video. If that's useful, you simply right click and find link clips. Once I click on that, they are now separate from each other. If I click on them both and reselect them, they are together again. That can be very useful when editing interviews or speeches or music and so on. You can also mute any clip on the left here or single out a single clip so only that one will play. Same goes for video, it's these ones here. And lastly, if you'd like to create fades or transitions, very simply, you have the bottom, uh, the, the top right corner of your clip. So now, once I go here, I have a smooth fade out. If I want to create a transition between the two, I click, right click between the two clips and decide how many frames dissolve. We have 25 frames in a second, so that's a one second dissolve. So it's just a smooth transition. You have many, many more options for these once you start opening your effects library on the top, on the left. You can find transition effects, um, video transitions all here. You can play around with those just to, if, you want, if you'd like to be more creative with that. So I think that covers most of the basics for the editing. I, um, let me just check, I haven't forgotten anything too important. Um, no, I think that covers it well. I will just show you where to find text. So if you want to add any generate any uh, any titles or text, you simply come into titles in your effects library, titles, and basic text. You throw it over, it'll add just as another clip. And when you click on it, you'll find that you can that all your effects for titles are here. Place. Make sure you have selected clip here we are and so don't want to change anything any fonts are all here very simple obviously and you can play with all of that uh, it's fairly obvious once you do the colors the fonts the sizes and the effects i will simply make uh just a small demonstration just for subtitles, which you will find right at the bottom. If any of you should want to add su subtitles, you'll see it'll create a last, um, a third section over your clip here with subtitle. And it's the same principle. As soon as you click on it, you'll find the text. And you can also affect the, all the same things as before, the font, the size, etc. And I will leave that there just as a demonstration because once we export it, you can either export with or without some titles. So that's important to remember. The last thing is for audio. Here we are. So let's go into our, if we select our audio track, leave that there. there we go. if we select our audio track, we can see over here we're in audio. We can affect volume, the direction of the audio, and if some of you have any knowledge of sound mixing, you can do that all in here. These are all the basic tools for mixing. I won't go into the details, but everything is available. There is even an extra section for it called Fairlight at the bottom. Again, I won't show you here, but this enables, uh, this, this will give you a whole uh, sound mixing platform for those who are interested in that. But again, I would recommend finding tutorials on that specifically. What you can do, however, is directly select, let's see, let's move this up a little bit. A bit closer, you can affect the size of your, of your tracks, by the way, here. So we can see, and this is the simple volume tool, which we can push up 
or down. So it's a, there we go. And if you alt click, you can create points. So this is very useful to do with your music track, for example. If you use those and you have someone talking, you might want to simply lower one passage so that the volume goes down and then back up once a person's finished talking, for instance. This is a very common technique uh, with the music. So a simple alt click will give you an extra point that you can manipulate very easily. The last thing I'll say for audio is you just want to make sure, uh, let's see, move that, keep just the mixer. So uh, let's see, I'm going to have a larger window to show you this in, but um, the volume here is simply the volume of the track. It, it won't affect the overall volume of your, of your clip. It's simply for you to hear the playback. And you basically just want to make sure with audio that it doesn't clip. By clip, I mean that it doesn't hit. Uh, so you'll see this goes in, can go into the red. I don't know why it's so small. And it gets very loud. You don't want it clipping or saturating. That's the general rule. You want it to be loud enough that you can hear, but not clipping or saturating. So get hitting into the red zones um, for your audio. That's the only thing you really want to make sure throughout the entire video. Otherwise, anybody who watches your video, especially where wearing a Wearing headphones will have their ears, their ears blown out. That, I think, is the general overview for the video edit. Um, obviously, you can make these clips as long as you like. There's no limitations of any kind on this, on this software. You can have as many tracks as you like. I will simply show you this window very quickly once we change over. This is for uh, adjusting the, the color and look of your images. So it's, it is very basic. Uh, well, it's actually a very, very rich tool. This is a professional tool used in cinema. But the bit I'm going to show you is very simple. If you just want to make minor adjustments to any clips you have, I'll show you just this one, one clip. So this is the, the, the node, it's called, that we are working in. Uh, with, by pushing Alt-S, you can create another one. For now, we won't even go that far. I'll simply show you here. So click on this circle. Over here, we have many options. Just this circle, if you want to add contrast, if you just want to add a little more or less saturation in your image, if you want to make it go black and white, for example, or have a lot more color, you can play around with those a little bit, just the, the, the highlights, the lowlights. I mean, everybody kind of does this a little bit, even just by being on, just by playing on their phones and on Instagram nowadays, everybody sees versions of this. This is the equivalent of that. It's nothing very difficult. There's one and two options here, just color temperature. Just These are things that you can play around and look at. Uh, this space is showing me the balance of my colors. Uh, the, the simple thing to remember is you don't, again, just like with audio, you don't want these things uh, touching. So you can choose any of these, actually, it won't matter. Even a waveform, they're all kind of, they all, will show you the same thing. Just the areas at the top are obviously the highlights, so the very light areas of your image bottoms are the very dark areas of the image. And if I push them down, you'll see they go way down. This would be an error, as you can see, they're touching the bottom. Just try and keep them at least above and fairly close to the top, just by sliding along these sliders here, just to make sure you have something balanced. And that's fine. And if you want to make any kind of modification, be creative with that in any way you want. You can feel free to, there's many crazy options which enable you to go, well, to be extremely creative in here. But I was just going to show you that just so you know where that is. And finally, the last section is the deliver tool. So again, one to get closer, two to zoom out. So this is where we will select our clip to export it. So this is uh, the last final important moment. And just as when we were selecting our clip, if I push I, it'll give me my in. So this is where the beginning of, our, of the exported clip I want, and, the, and I push O for the out, wherever I want that to be. So now we will come into this section, top left, and we will choose the type of format we want to export. The most standard format for to be read online, to send around, to view on any platform 
is called H264. So I recommend going in there and changing this one here where it says format QuickTime to MP4. Now in MP4, you can adjust every detail. You can obviously choose where you'd like this to go. So I'll put this in the desktop, this clip, and we can just call this one a test. Save. Let's see, so we'll just scroll down and have a look. So just make sure that everything you've selected matches the final format you want. So this is full HD standard, but you can choose any in 25 frames a second. This enables you to, to uh, restrict the file size if you want to create something smaller, but for best quality, you're best leaving this on, best, on what's actually called best. That will give you the highest quality result in MP4 format, which is already a fairly well compressed format. They won't be large files. I would also then just drop down to subtitle settings because we added a subtitle here. So if you do have them, make sure to include them. And you can either choose to burn into video. So if you want to, the person who reads the video, this, the subtitle essentially becomes like part of the text. It's within the video. Or you can have them as a separate file if ever you want to export to any other format where you uh, have it, where it will essentially operate as a time code for putting online. And it will give you a, a bit like a tech, a TXT uh, file, which, which can be applied into videos online. So here we can burn into video. We can also go into audio just to make sure everything, usually there's nothing to do. Uh, but just to make sure everything is active, AAC is normal. Uh, here, uh, data rate, you want it to be at least 128 just to be uh, within normal quality standards, but usually there's nothing to be done. And then we simply click on Add to Render Queue, and it will add itself over here on the right. And as soon as I click Start Render, it will render into the, far, into the folder we selected, and it'll be done. And that's really the, the end of it. So I think that's everything. Um, just one last look. Yes, yeah, so I think the other tabs we can ignore. They won't enable anything more than what you will need to edit a basic video. And yeah, that should be it. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Samuel. That was a, a really nice uh, overview for everyone. Uh, I'm sure it's really appreciated and have to say, as someone that doesn't know much about video editing myself, it was really interesting to follow that too. Great. Well, I hope that was, hope that was helpful. W would, would you uh, mind if we threw the floor open to, to questions? Of course. No, that's fine. Yeah. Please. So if anyone on the Zoom chat has a question for Samuel, please do fire away. Hi, uh, this is Sachin. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, is this tool free? Uh, to edit? Yeah, so there is a, if you go on the website called blackmagicdesign.com, you will find this bit of software for free. There are two versions. One is the standard DaVinci Resolve. That one is free. There is also the one I was using is DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's a paying one. It's identical. It just has a few more things enabled and enables the import of a few more types of, uh, a few more formats of video but they're usually only geared towards professional uh, cinema camera footage. So ultimately, there shouldn't be any, the free one will give you access to everything you will need as far as I, as I can tell. Um, and unless you're doing something really high-end cinema, you won't need the, the professional one. Uh, so that one will be free. Oh, thank you. Uh, maybe if I may, Francois here, uh, I've just made my first video uh, two weeks ago, uh, <laughs> suffered a bit, but uh, one thing with the free version is make sure that your source videos are in a format you will be able to import. That was for me the main, main limitation. It doesn't accept all formats. So if you spend like one hour or one day filming loads of things, then you have to convert them. So think of it before and yeah. try to, to make your source footage uh, in the video that you will be able to import. That's correct. If I remember you were editing with the uh, footage we shot on the Sony FX7, which is a big professional 
camera and the footage indeed will not be shown from that one on the free version, which is a bit of an unfortunate limitation, but that is a high-end cinema camera. Uh, yeah, that, and that's what I saw online. And also, as you say, there are loads, loads of tutorials online. Yes. Really have a look. But your, yours was the best. I mean, I've not seen any that short that covers so much. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Francois, for your, uh, for your advice. That does sound like a very sound advice indeed. Um, is there anyone else on the line that has a question, perhaps, for Samuel? Well, it, it sounds like you, you covered uh, all of the basics then in that case. Okay. Um, yeah. Perhaps I could just, just flag up, um, while Francois, while you are here, um, Francois is uh, very kindly one of our mentors uh, over the weekend. And I believe I see also uh, Claudia Marcelloni, another of our mentors on the line. So um, I would just like to express our heartfelt thanks on behalf of all of the participants in the WebFest and uh, to encourage um, any of those who have questions uh, regarding, you know, uh, science communication, outreach, anything in that kind of direction to, to get in touch with you via the, the Matamos channel. It's been actually really nice to see everybody's work and the discussion. So I think I get more of, out of that than the other way around. <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you. Thanks very much again for your time, Claudia. Good. Okay, then in that case, we will wrap this session up now. Um, I wish all of the participants the very best of luck um, going back to your teams, putting together your videos for this evening. Uh, please don't forget your one minute videos need to be submitted by 5 p.m. CEST this evening. And all videos will then be shown in the final session at 6 p.m. CEST straight after that. Thanks again, Samuel. Thanks everyone for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for all, all joining us. Happy so hacking. Bye. Bye-bye.